Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share our content with your network. All right, y'all. So we've all lived life. Some ups, some downs, some trials, some tribulations, some major wins, and some really frustrating losses. But through it all, we've made it through. And some of us have made it through by the grace of God, others by the seat of our pants. But here we are today. I want to introduce you to somebody who has gone through those ups and downs, but came out on the other side better, bigger, stronger, faster, more amazing than ever because of the grace of God. You all, please say hello to my friend, Miss Bonnie McVie. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Ricky. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. I'm excited to be with you. Bonnie, there is so much to talk about with you because now you and I, we know each other through some various things. And I know, girl, that you, when you come to the table, you are bringing the full meal and all the courses plus dessert. But what (laughs) we're going to do today, we're going to talk about your issue, concerns, successes through your addiction. So let's talk a little bit about that. Bonnie, tell me a little bit about, first of all, what it was you were addicted to and how you got there. Alcohol. Mm -hmm. And um, my parents were drinkers. Uh, My mom was an alcoholic. And um, alcohol was everywhere. The parties were everywhere. It was just what you did. And so naturally, as a teenager, we started drinking at the beer busts and um, that the neighborhood would have. And um, that I was about 15 when I first started drinking. Wow. Mm-hmm. That was, so yeah. when you first started drinking at 15, of course, m- most folks who start drinking at that age, they're not doing it by themselves. You're not yet hiding in the closet with everything. So you and your friends were straight chilling and drinking. Yep. How bad at a teenager did it get for you? As a teenager, it was more um, occasional weekend drunks, right? Like, but there was early on no off switch for me. And so while others could have a couple of drinks and have fun, I always drank until I passed out. Wow. At 15, you were drinking until you passed out. Yes. Yes. Your parents know or your family? Uh, No, not for a long time. I would say I was able to keep it under taps till I was about probably 18 when I moved out of the house um, because my mother was a drinker. And so she wasn't going to call me on my drinking because then I would turn around and call her on hers. Yeah. Right? And nobody wants to be called out on their own crap. It's easier to point at somebody else. Right. So here you are. You're this teenage. I mean, would you consider yourself an alcoholic at that time? Or did that? I don't know that I would consider myself. I wouldn't. I don't think I would have considered myself an alcoholic at that time. but. Um, my body had a propensity, is that the word to, um, not be able to handle the alcohol. So there is a physical addiction to the alcohol that where the body doesn't process it in some people like it does in others. And I would say, yes, that was already in my gene pool. Wow. So then you move out of your parents' house. You're 18. Where did you go to next? Did you go to school? Did you start working? What did you do? I went to beauty school. Okay. And And how uh, was the drinking there? Oh, yeah. Lots of drinking. Yes. Lots of drinking. Lots of partying. Lots of fun. Yep. And um, just young, wild people in beauty school, right? We were just (laughs) all feeling our own independence and thinking we were so cool going out to the bars right. and all the things. And then I got married in my early twenties and had a child and had a marriage that wasn't working. And so I was drinking for mm-hmm. that. And um, I would say by my mid twenties, I was a daily drinker. Wow. Now, when you say daily drinker, are you talking about, I had a drink a day or you know, I drank day. not all day, but several drinks in the evening. Wow. My okay. my mom taught me by her behavior that you have a drink when you're making dinner for the family. And so that was what I started doing. And then I just continued drinking until I went to bed. 
or passed out. <laughs> oh. Now, you said you had a child at this time. Yeah. And you were still doing all the things. At what point in your life in this marriage that wasn't working with your new baby, your newfound independence, doing all the things that you had learned to do from your drinking parents, at what point did you look at this and go, this could be a problem? Well, I got divorced and I got remarried. So there and and I had another child. And prior to my, well, actually, during my first marriage, I had a very wise woman say to me, you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And I'm like, yeah, I should probably get divorced. (laughs) And then I thought to myself again, oh, if nothing changes, nothing changes. I should get remarried. Oh, maybe I should have another child. Oh, oh, then I got, maybe I should, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So I got divorced again, right? Like I was still all in that same mindset and I was trying to change my circumstances when what I should have been changing was my mind and my mindset and my thoughts about myself. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't until many years later uh, in my 40s, 45, um, that one of my children got in some trouble. Mm -hmm. and I was beside myself. I didn't know what to do, and all I did was go to bed that night, and I prayed to God, please help. Mm -hmm. Just help. I don't, and I would like you to know also that at that time, I did not have a relationship with God. I hadn't been to church, nothing. I, the God I grew up with was not a God I wanted to know. It was a very condemning God that made me feel like I was going to hell and I could never, ever be good enough for that God. Gosh, I think a lot of us kind of grew up with that. Yes, yes. And um, then um, the next day I woke up and it was wine 30. (laughs) Time to make dinner at wine 30. And I didn't, I didn't even think about getting my glass of wine and I'm making dinner and I'm thinking, Oh, I forgot my wine. Mm -hmm. And then I poured the wine and I, it, it actually made me nauseous. The smell was like, I couldn't even, I didn't drink it. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I didn't pray for God to take away that, but he knew that's what I needed. And so he took away the obsession for me, which was amazing. Yeah. It is. You you spoke earlier about, you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And you were trying to change all the things that you thought you could change. But of right. course, one of them. And right. you said about changing the mindset. What was your mindset at that time around drinking the people that drank or, or even how your parents were? How What was your mindset then? This was normal. It's kind of like a fish doesn't know it's in water until you're out of water. That was normal for me that people drank and people drank often and they drank a lot. And the other thing that was going on for me was um, life had thrown me a lot of circumstances that I felt were very unfair. And I later found out after I quit drinking and had some clarity that I'd been living as a victim of everything Mm. happening in my life. Yeah. And so drinking was like, okay, it was either a screw you or it was a screw me, right? I'm going to have a drink to screw you or to screw me. And um, the only person that was hurting was me every time. The whole time. So during that time, uh, you know, still talking about mindset, how did you feel about yourself at that time? Very low, very low. I had no confidence. I had no self-esteem. I had no worth. I, um, I was just kind of living this muddy existence. I like that. A muddy existence. Kind of just walking through it, going through the motion type deal, huh? Yeah. I often tell people that um, it was, I I didn't realize I had choices. It was kind of like being a ball in a pinball machine. When they pull the trigger, you just go wherever that ball goes, right? I had no intention in my life. I, um, I was just... At the mercy of what was next. Yeah. Wow. And I think so many of us, not even drinking, but the addictions to other things, whether it is being the addiction to TV, to food, to sex, to parties, to whatever. I mean, there are some people watching this who are addicted to education. 
They are yes. literally professional students because yes. they're trying to hide something, mask something, fix something, you know, or yeah. feel better about themselves. So now you said you're yes. in your if late 40s. We, Go ahead. Oh, excuse me. I was just going to say we can be addicted to our mindset also. Mm hmm. Oh. To the bad, to the bad mind, to the wrong mindset. We can be addicted to it, and have our blinders on, and think there's no other way, right? We can be addicted to drama, right? All <laughs> that of those right things. there, girl. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, because you said earlier that sometimes a fish doesn't even know it's in water, and so right. you don't know it's a problem until something happens. So right. in your your kid got in trouble, mm -hmm. you prayed, the God mm -hmm. that you didn't believe and wasn't interested in showed up for you mm -hmm. took the taste of that alcohol out of your mouth bonnie how yes. long have you been sober right now uh 20 years i'll have 21 years at uh, october 1st Woo, girl congratulations that is phenomenal because there's these so, are the so days i don't make it yeah these are the days i prayed for i am living the days i prayed for I love that. Talk to us a little bit about that living the days that you prayed for, because you remember you said earlier, you, the God that you knew about, you weren't interested. What changed your mind? Um, I went to AA mm. um, and um, in AA, you know, we have the big book and um, everything from the big book or AA was started by a couple of gentlemen on the East coast. And they came from, um, the Quakers. That was a early Christian movement in the early 1900s. And they took everything right out of the Bible. Wow. So I got a hold of a recovery Bible okay. and I saw that everything was in the Bible and that got me really curious. So I found myself a Bible teaching church and I was still a rebel at this time, I want you to know. <laughs> um, when I was doing hair, I had these lovely women that would come in and they would minister to me. And I would always play the devil's advocate. And um, they they brought the word to me, right? So I knew where to look. I knew where to go to learn. And so I went started going to their church and started learning about this God that I thought was, you know, so awful to people. Mm. And um, sure enough, I learned about God's grace. Oh, that right God's, there. His unlimited, unconditional love for us and his favor for our life to be beautiful. Oh, gosh. I mean, I, I think that's so cool. His, un, his unmerited favor for our lives to be beautiful. Yes. So, and Bonnie, tell me about your beautiful life. Yes. So um, after I got sober, I um, well, actually, right before I got sober, I met a man in church mm -hmm. uh, at a Christmas play who was a sober man. And we started dating. And I was like, this is God's grace again. Now he sent me a sober man. I should be paying attention. Right. This was right before I got sober. And so when I got sober, then that relationship continued and we got married mm -hmm. um, and uh, we went back to church together in this learning all about God and God's grace and um, knowing that someone, someone, the creator of the universe of everything loves me, me. Yeah. So much when I would look at my children and I would think how much I love my children mm -hmm. and he loves us even more. Yeah. I sat in that confidence. I sat in that belief and I lived from that. And that's when life really began to change. Oh, and goodness. we decided that we wanted to um, create a life uh, that we could do some traveling while we were still working. And so we moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, we spend our winters in Florida and we travel in our RV in the summer back up to Washington, where we both lived for many years. Wow. So I'm looking at this absolutely stunning background. Tell us where you are right now, Bonnie. I am in uh, Paulsbo, Washington, the great Pacific Northwest. And we are staying at some friend's house and they live in the middle of a forest. And so we are surrounded by trees. Mm. And it's absolutely gorgeous. 
It, it looks beautiful from where you are. So you said you all get to travel while you work. What is it that you do, Miss Bonnie? I am a life coach and I am a life coach for women who are believers who haven't really decide, haven't really lived or experienced the grace they've heard about, but wow. never really felt. Mm. And while we're working on whatever it is in their life that they come to me from, we are doing it through God's love mm -hmm. and his grace. Wow. That, that right there is just absolutely incredible because, you know, we talked to a lot of coaches on here. You're one of the very first Christian life coaches. Mm, nope. Actually, you're probably the second as I'm thinking back right now, but still it is good to know that there are Christian life coaches because there are some folks, that's what we're looking for. You know what I mean? Yes. I want somebody yes. to talk to me from my core of belief. And, and that sounds like what you do. Bonnie, let me ask you this, because while you were drinking, you had this kind of mindset. Now that you are sober, living for Christ, you have a business that you love, the life that he died for you to have. What's your mindset now? Happy, joyous, and free. <laughs> I love that so much. Your smile and literally says it all. Add, yeah. And, and I might also add peace. I have a peace now that I never had before. And we have, I have been through some very difficult circumstances since I've been sober, my own cancer journey and my granddaughter's brain cancer journey. Mm -hmm. And the whole time going through both of those, mm -hmm. God was so present in my life and when we were down in children's hospital with my granddaughter, my daughter and I would say to each other, these people, I don't know how they're doing it without the love of Christ in them. And wow. she is now 14 years old and she is a survivor also. That is absolutely incredible. So Bonnie, if some somebody watching this right now, they are going through that struggle. They're not yet sober. They are yes. still thinking that it's, things that are being done to them. They don't know yes. yet that if nothing changes, nothing changes. What would you tell somebody struggling with that right now? Because you know they're struggling in silence, right? Oh, absolutely. In in major silence. And it's always worse than what they think it is, um, as was my story. Um, there is hope. There is love. There is forgiveness. There is a place to live without shame. Shame was a big problem I carried for many years. Mm -hmm. And to be shameless over the life I lived then compared to the life I live now, because those behaviors that I had while I was drinking have not happened in 21 years. Awesome. <laughs> now that I'm sober. <laughs> yeah, right. And so um, it's not you, it's the alcohol. Mm -hmm. There is hope. Find someone that you can trust and yeah. share your struggle and get help. Yeah, that's crazy. So, Bonnie, you've been sober 21 years. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank Let you. me ask you, do you still struggle with that, that need, the want, the desire for it every now and again? And if you do, how do you handle that with your support? It happens very rarely. I am able to go out with people for dinner who are drinking or social events that when it really gets me is when I'm late at night, if I'm watching a TV show or I go to a movie where they're drinking for that social relaxation, sometimes I think, oh, that would really feel nice. But then I remember what my life is like now compared to what my life was then. And I would never trade it for oh. anything. That is so good. Bonnie, if somebody wanted to work with you or just reach out to you, where could they find you? They can find me on Instagram at Technicolor Grace, uh, which is the name of my company. And that came from the opposite of that kind of muddy existence that I told you I lived in mm -hmm. to the Technicolor of life that I live in now through God's grace. So Instagram Technicolor Grace. They can also reach me at Bonnie at technicolorgrace.com. Awesome. Okay, you guys, y'all heard it here. There's so much more to this story. But if you oh. are looking 
someone to talk to, somebody to help you through, you're looking for a Christian life coach that speaks to your core values, you'll want to reach out to Bonnie. And don't worry, if you didn't get her in her information, all of it will be in the description below. Bonnie, my friend, before yes. I let you go, we have to play a game. <laughs> Fun. So this game is called This or That. It's really okay. Simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two or three things. And you off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. That sounds fun. Let's do this. <laughs> Grits or oatmeal? Oatmeal. At the yellow light, stop or slow down? Slow down. All right. Shopping, online or in stores? Ooh, that's a tough one. Online. Okay. Well, you travel a lot, so I would think it would be kind of online for you. Airplane, window seat or aisle seat? Aisle. All right. Toilet paper roll, over or under? Over. We, we are batting a thousand here, believe it or not. Okay. In house slippers or bare feet? Bare feet. TikTok or Twitter? TikTok. East Coast or West Coast? I got to go with both. I live in Florida and Washington. That's true, you do. <laughs> I can't this or that one. No worries. It depends, okay. it depends on what time of year. Yeah, it depends on the weather. I can totally agree with that. Okay. Exercise or extra fries? Exercise. Mm. Reality TV. Yes, please. Or I just can't. I can't. Me neither. It's too embarrassing. I just can't do it. All right. Target or Walmart? Uh, Walmart. All right. The Super Bowl. The game or the commercials? Uh, neither. <laughs> so you're not a big you're not a big sports fan. That's okay. We're going to love you anyway. And finally, Thank Bonnie, you. what is something about you that you wish people knew? Uh, I love to dance. Oh, okay. I got an extra bonus question for you because you said that. So slow dance or shake that thing? Shake that thing, girl. I like it. <laughs> so it's still a rebel at heart. Bonnie, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate oh, Ricky, it. It was been fun. Thank you. It's been so much fun. And all of you all watching, that's it for this time. But don't worry, we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday presents.